Blade Smiths, welcome to the forge. In this first round of competition, you're gonna have to forge your signature blades from this material. Salvage steel. We've got bicycle chain, chainsaw chain, cable wire, spud wrench, lawnmower blade, railroad spike, farrier file, and jackhammer bits. You must also include a visual element from whatever steel you choose into your blade's design. In an order chosen at random before you entered the forge, you will now come forward and choose one of the steels. Each item can only be selected by one contestant. Ryan, you're up first. Please choose your steel. I have free reign over anything on that table. I choose the jackhammer bits because in terms of edge retention, they take a lot of abuse, and I don't think I have anything to worry about in terms of heat treating it. Mark, you're up next. Steve, you're last. Choose your steel. I was hoping for cable. Even though cable is very difficult to work with, I've used it before, so at least I got a shot. You will have 10 minutes to work on your designs. You will have three hours to forge your blades. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your 10-minute design window starts now. I'm designing a recurve bolo style blade because the bolo design, a little bit heavy on the front end for chopping that's tapered back into a nice thin cutting knife. I've recently completed my journeyman bladesmith rating. I feel a lot more comfortable in my skills. That's all the stamp. They just give you the stamp and right away you, you have the skills. <laughs> I think my biggest strength in blade making is my knowledge of historical blades. So I'm designing a straight up broad sax. The rasp is probably the most simple thing to keep the element in the blade. I don't get nervous about things very often. Um, I think the thing that made me the most nervous was losing my voice. I'm going to make a drop point recurve blade. I am an artist, and the advantage I think I might have is my artistic ability and being able to see clean lines and make a really beautiful blade. Growing up, I was told that you shouldn't be an artist, and I would make myself prove to them that they're wrong. Your 10-minute design window is closed. Your three-hour forge time starts now. It's very nice to see Steve is welding the ends of his cable, because we've seen what happens when you don't. He'll just unspool and come apart in pieces. Working with cable can be difficult, but he was smart to pick it, because if he forge welds it correctly, he'll have a very tough material. A piece of cable this large takes more effort, more time to get forge welded up successfully. The cable is dirty, nasty stuff. To get a good weld, it needs to be clean. I can add a little flux, I can wire brush it, and then start tightening it and just start working on that weld. If I don't get it welded up, I don't have a knife at the end. It's, it's that simple. So Steve's got his billet over on Big Blue, and it looks like it's holding together from here. I'm confident that I have completed the most important part of this task, the forge weld. Now I have a working piece that I can continue my drawing process. I clean up my blade and make it look all pretty, and I've incorporated the knob part of the jackhammer bit inside of the blade tang junction. He quenched it in water. I don't know what's happening. He didn't dip in water. He was just screwing with us. He's teasing us. He's teasing us. He just wanted to see my head pop. Yeah. It is very nice to know the judges were paying attention. Now, broad sax has a spear tip point, so I do a Japanese tip cut. Mark, he's got a very, very lean blade, and those Ferris wraps around it at the end. It's very easy to draw a tip out of that. Instead, he cut a preform, so he's lost even more material. So when he gets to the grinder, he likely won't have much material left. I would venture to say that Mark's forging on that was the absolute minimum he could possibly do. Yeah, and without reforging that metal entirely, he won't know exactly how strong it is. Steve just quenched. My question to you is, what does Steve have to do to make sure that we see cable on his blade? You can take a piece of that cable, wrap it around a Mercaso or something like that. To ensure the fact that it is a knife made from cable, I add cable bolsters. Now there is no doubt that this knife is cable. Look at Ryan showing a lot of patience. He's doing thermal cycling, so that's good. We've got Ryan there in the quench. I file test it. 
and realize only the top third of my blade is hardened. I'm gonna have to take a chance and quench again and pray that this thing hardens up pretty good. The quench is the most important aspect of making a blade because before that, it's nothing but a piece of metal. I file test it first time. Quench is good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bladesmith, shut down your machines. Return your anvils. Your work is done. Smiths, welcome to the strength test, the ice block chop. <laughs> I'm gonna take each of your knives and strike these ice blocks six times. This is gonna test the strength of your edge as well as the overall durability of your knife. Steve, you're up first, are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Edge is perfect. Didn't roll over didn't chip out. The handle is a little bit narrow, but uh, it held up. Good job. Thank you. Ryan, you ready? Do I have a choice? No, not really. <laughs> All yours. Nice. Good God. <laughs> held up, Ryan. Still got a really, really sharp edge on there. My concern is the handle. Having this integral chunk here, immediately you just want to reach up and grab it up here. That's not where you want it because you don't want it so close to the edge there. Mark, what you thinking? I'm ready to rock. Marks are held up. You got a little bit of edge deformation. There's nothing major, but there's definitely some issues on the handle. I mean, you've got a guard on here, but it's not all the way up. That's why it's nice to have a Rocasso here, so it makes it easier to fit the guard up with all this gap in here. Next up is a sharpness test. For that, I'm gonna turn you over to Doug. That was fun to watch your blades go up against the ice, but are they still sharp? I will take your weapon, and I'll deliver three slices on this rope. Steve, you're up first. You ready? Let's do this. All right, Steve, it wouldn't cut all the way through the rope, but it is sharp enough to lacerate some of the strands. So overall, your knife will cut. Thank you. Ryan, you're next. You ready? All yours, buddy. Wow. I don't see any deformations on the blade. It stayed true. It did slice some pieces of the rope, so it is sharp, and your blade will cut. Thank you, sir. Mark, you're up. You ready? Let's do it. Nice. Your edge geometry definitely works better on a rope cut. It's sliced in deeper. Overall, your blade will cut. Thank you. But on your handle construction, there's a lot of gaps I can see you can see the glue all over, so it's not as finished as the other blades. And it's only held together by glue. Regardless of my handle, I'm thinking I'm running even, simply because my test performances were better than the other contestants. Bladesmiths, it's time for one of you to leave the forge. Mark, your blade did not make the cut. Jay Nielsen will explain. Mark, aside from being the only blade to suffer damage during our testing, we also felt that your blade was the least finished of the three. So for those reasons, we have to let you go. Mark, please surrender your blade. My blade was not as finished as it should be. The 
I tried right to the last second, but I ran out of time. I may not be a Poison Fire champion, but I'm definitely the quietest Poison Fire competitor. 